All right, we all have been using impulse responses forever for simulating cabs. It's been the standard for forever. But there's one little thing that Bogren Digital has been doing in their amps that make them sound more realistic. And it's a technology they've developed called IRDX. Uh, it's like IR Dynamics. And the idea behind it is that an IR is just EQ. It's just an EQ curve that imitates the one of a cab, but it's static. It's completely static. So the IRDX technology that you might have seen in the MLC amp is here to close the gap between fake sounding cabs and real sounding cabs. Bogren Digital used machine learning to figure out the differences between a static IR sound and an actual cabinet that you mic up in real life where the air moves, bounces all over, and you know, the speaker compresses the sound, distorts it, and it's not just a static EQ, it's actually moving air, it's actually varying depending on you know, what's played into it, how loud is the amp, etc. But now they're releasing the IRDX Core plugin, which lets you use this technology with any amp sim that you want. Uh, right now I'm plugged into my AxeFX. This is a patch I use live. It's a 5150 sim, and I tried a bunch of cabinets, but I ended up only using the Coloscope from the Bogren Downtuned pack. So with like any compression or distortion plugin, how hot your input is will have a big impact on how much it's gonna distort or compress, etc. You can dial it in yourself with the input fader. It's automatically linked by default with the out, so the volume doesn't change too much. But you can also let the plugin figure out the ideal amount of input it needs. So you just play the track and click here. There we go. What I like to do with new plugins when I test them is to push them to the absolute maximum they can go. So I'm gonna click on intense as well. And right away you're gonna hear it's very distorted this way. This is way too much, but in a kind of cool way, it's like a broken speaker kind of distortion. But in most cases, it's a fairly subtle difference, but it's like an icing on the cake on your tone or your mix. I think it works best this way when it's just like a tiny little final touch on your tone at the very end after your cab. <laughs> What I noticed is, I don't know exactly how it works, but the normal and intense algorithms, I guess, or modes, uh, don't work the same way. Like if you have intense, but kind of dialed back down and normal, but at the maximum, it's not the same thing. It seems to me that the normal one has a more subtle way of distorting. It's like, like it's more linear, I don't know. And the intense one has kind of more of that broken speaker, really loud volume, real amp. Yeah, I really like pushing the normal one really hard. It's very modern, it's very clean. Uh, if you have an IR that has a chaotic response, it's not the case here, this is a very clean IR, I love this one. But if, if you have the kind of IR that has a bunch of picks and deeps and stuff like that, uh, if you were to push this kind of distortion pretty hard, I shouldn't call it distortion, it's not just distortion, it's a lot more complex, but that's the easiest way to think about it for me. It's really good at cleaning up that high end, at making it more linear, more clean. I didn't prepare any riff for a full mix context, but I can just pull up Cream Drums and figure out something with the MIDI pack. That's included if you buy it. Uh, here we go. That's groovy. It's supposed to be 130 though, so let me... Yep. Yeah, if you like one, you can just drag MIDI from here. And poof, you're set.
I really like these extreme settings. They really give this kind of bite to the high end. It's really angry. It, it makes the guitars angrier, I think, in that kind of riffs. Yeah, this sounds like way too much on its own, but I kind of like it in the mix. It's dirty. But even on the normal mode, as a more subtle effect, I think you would pick up the differences if you have a good ear. Right away, to me, it's a bit more angry, a bit more defined, a bit more aggressive. I like that. But on the long term, also, because it's more dynamic, because there's more stuff moving around and the frequency response not being as static as with an IR, it's also more natural and it will be less tiring to the ear. When you get that like 5k, 6k fizz that's here all the time without moving ever, it can get tiring on the ears. If it's moving around, it's a little better on the long run. On the full album, I think this will shine. Anyway, that's it for me for today. Uh, I'm already slapping some of that on my mixes and I, I really like what it's doing. It's very subtle still, I think, but it's a really nice icing on the cake for a guitar mix for me. So, yep. Take care. Bye.